Praise the Lord. It's good to be saved. Amen. 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 It's good to be back. This is a real blessing, real treat for my wife and I. That's my wife, Susan. <laughs> I call her Mrs. Wonderful. I started calling her that when I courted her. Did we court her? Is that what they said? Oh. Well, anyway. <laughs> um, and now she's still Mrs. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. And uh, it's just a real pleasure to be here. I've got a chance to meet some of you tonight for the first time, some of you again. Some of you haven't met yet. So I'm Dave Spurgeon. Uh, I'm the band of Cherry Baptist Church in Dayton, Ohio. And uh, we're going to sing a couple songs, Lord willing. We just going right into preaching from then? Or, or, or okay, good. You got to be snacking by quarter to eight. How many believe that? <laughs> uh, amen. But uh, okay, let's just get with it. You really want me to turn this on, huh? <laughs> All right, can you hear me now? No. Huh? I'm going to turn it down just a <laughs> If I retire, I will do Verizon commercials. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I tell you what, a room this size, uh, I don't need that. But, uh, amen. They told me to put it on and I try to do what I'm supposed to do. Can you hear her now? No. Which one's first? Huh? You know, if you would revise the system every meeting, I'd probably have it. Right now. All right. She wanted that gay keyboard. He's a mind reader. That's amazing. Amen. All right, let's get to work. I look around and see the good things you've done for me, I know I'm unworthy of them all. For the blessings you freely give, I owe my life to Him. I've got so much to thank Him for. I've got so much to thank Him for, so much to praise Him for, you see. So good to me when I think of what you've done and where he's brought me from. I've got so much to thank him for, and sometimes while on this way I kneel and stop to say thank you for all you've done for me when I read. Heaven sure, oh please, just let me kneel once more, I've got so to thank Him for. I've got so much to thank Him for, so much to praise Him for, you see, He's been so good to me. When I think of what He's done and where He's brought me from, I've got so much to Not made a 
change in one word that it said, but it sure made a change. This blessed old book that I hold in my hand, it's true from beginning to end. It's a solid foundation where I firmly stand. Sin kept me from it, now it keeps me from sin. find when you read it that there's something wrong, there's something wrong. This blessed old book that I hold in my hand, it's true from beginning to end. It's a solid foundation where I firmly stand. Sin kept me from it, now it keeps me from sin. Get into the hands 
of uh, lost sinners everywhere. Yeah. Now let me tell you, there's a, there's a club in Colorado called the Sons of Silence. I don't know if you ever heard of them. Uh, uh, we were at war with them back in the East. And when I say at war, that doesn't mean, you know, we arm wrestled. And, uh, and uh, on Wednesday night, I got an opportunity to give, give one of those books to a paramedic that works with a member of the Sons of Sound Motorcycle Club. And she was telling about she would, I said, you give this to him. I signed it. Yesterday, no, actually, yes, yesterday morning, I put a hardcover book in the mail to a San Bernardino Hells Angel that bought it on eBay. Amen. And God put in that book, I mean, with, with, with some of the, he's doing it, man. Amen. Because people are praying. Okay? And uh, so please pray for that project. And yes, if you know somebody, yeah, buy it. Yeah, you know, you want to read it, see how good God been to me? Yeah, buy it. Okay? But uh, pray for it. Okay? At 1 Timothy chapter 6 tonight, in verse 12, this is one of my favorite verses. <coughs> it says there, fight the good fight of faith. Amen. That's the part I'm going to preach on. We'll read the whole thing. Uh, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called, and hath professed a good profession before many witnesses. Again, let's go back up to the beginning of the verse. And uh, here's what Paul tells Timothy. He says, fight the good fight of faith. Let's pray again tonight. Lord, we do come to you in the name that is above every name. Father, we are gathered here tonight for no other reason. Lord God, that we might uh, lift up your Son with songs of gratitude. Father, we might humble our hearts and receive something from heaven. Father, we're needy people. But uh, folks that will gather on a Friday night, uh, at least acknowledge that they know they need something from you. And we need something from you. Amen. Lord, I need wisdom and guidance and just the ability to deliver the mail tonight, Father. And if anybody gets anything, that will be of you, your grace. Help us, Lord God, to receive the Word of God as the Spirit of witness, the Spirit of God bears witness, and we'll thank you for anything that goes right tonight. Lord, I don't know the circumstances, situations everybody's life tonight, but if there's a chance in a million somebody in here tonight is not saved, pray tonight be the night of their salvation. Yeah. Father God, I pray, God, you just get a blessing tonight. You deserve one. Right. We pray you bless us, and we need that, but God, I pray we be a blessing to you. So I pray in Jesus' name. Commit the service to thee. Amen. 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 I like that. I'm glad that's in there because of all the things, amen, that I've ever given much attention to in my life, uh, fight was one of the things I got kind of good at. Amen. <laughs> On my uh, DD 214 that uh, some of you veterans know what that is, uh, there's a little box and it gives your military occupational specialty. Now mine was light weapons, infantry, paratrooper qualified. Amen. And then right next to that, there's a little box, and, and, and that's got your uh, civilian equivalency, the code there. And in the little box next to my specialty, it says, none. Okay? It's uh, what your tax dollars trained me to do. There is no civilian, civilian equivalency. So when I got out of the Army in 1974, I just started doing what I was trained to do. Uh, fight, amen, play the guns, things like that, amen. I did that for a long time. And then, and then, hey, listen, I came to my senses, and I bowed not just my knee, but my heart to the lovely Lord Jesus Christ in a jail cell uh, 20, almost 22 years ago. There are folks that saw me come into church the first time, and maybe for the first couple of years, uh, but that first month or so, I had hair down the middle of my back, and, and black shoes, and black boots, boots, a black hair, black leather jacket. I even had black hair back then, I think. Amen. And uh, my pastor even said to me one time, he said, David, I'll be glad when you quit dressing like paladin. I said, actually, I already have because the feds took all my pistols. Amen. But, uh, but uh, amen. Folks said, yeah, let's just see how long this lasts. Well, in November will be 22 years. Amen. Amen. Seems to be last and pretty good. Amen. 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 But like I say, uh, you know, I had to learn to be good. Why are you a preacher, Virgin? Well, I told God early on, uh, listen, I'm going to have to learn a new trade, Lord. 
because uh, everything I'm good at is illegal. And uh, I said, I'm willing to do that. I understand that. But uh, I'll work for you if you'll let me. And they let me attend a church that had a Bible institute that let me attend for free. Give me a pastor that had the guts look me in the eye and tell me the truth. Amen. And not that he was uh, getting out to pass, getting patience, but I'll tell you what I thank God. Hey, in this day and age, especially in professing Christianity, we got a lot of folks uh, that are in pulpits every weekend. They won't even tell you the truth, amen. Right. Yeah. Well, of course, because it might cost them a vacation or something. Right. I don't know. Mm -hmm. right. But God put me in a church for a man of God. I uh, believed that book and, and told us that book was true. Amen. Right. I started learning and I started growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. God told me to preach. And, and uh, so what does that mean? What did you go into the ministry? No, I, I tell you what, a call to preach is a call to study. And it was five more years before God put me full time in evangelism. Amen? Yeah. Amen. You know what I'm, here's what I'm trying to get at here. Uh, I found out to serve Jesus Christ, to be a Christian, and, and to serve Jesus Christ, uh, you don't have to become a wimp. On the contrary, uh, the truth of the matter is, the toughest men and women that have ever lived live for Jesus Christ. Amen. And I need to find that. I'm not just saying that. You can find that all through your Bible. Right. And then and then you can find that all through church history, too. And like some of the songs we sing, people were, people were burned at the stake 500 years ago so that you and I could have a King James Bible. Right. Amen. 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 So uh, a lot of folks in this world think that Christians are wimps. And I'm going to tell you why. Because a lot are. But I'm glad he put me with a crowd that wasn't ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm glad that uh, God didn't require my manhood of me when he saved me. And I'm glad, hey, I'm glad he put me in a good fight of faith with a bunch of other people fighting the good fight. I like that verse. Amen. I got another message, another message called uh, The Good Fight. And, uh, amen. And then the Lord showed me this, and I'm going to preach on this tonight. Why? Why fight the good fight of faith? Why fight the good fight of faith? You ready? You ready? Number one, because of what it'll do for you to get in on a good fight of faith, to get around some other soldiers of Jesus Christ, and to step over the line, to make a commitment. It'll do some things for you. Number one, it'll give you character. It'll give you character. Fighting the good fight of faith will, will give you character. Here's what I'd say. Uh, we got a lot of folks these days, uh, professing Christians, they're way more concerned with being character than they are having character. <laughs> Amen. we got plenty of those. And, uh, and here's what character is. Doing the right thing for the right reason. Amen. Let me tell you what true test of character for a man, a woman, a boy, or a girl is. It's not what you do in the amen corner. It's what you do when you're alone. Right. It's what you look at when you think nobody else is looking. It's what you do uh, not standing on a street corner, but when you're going through line at the grocery store and you're sensing enough the Holy Spirit when he says, give that person a track, no matter what they look like, uh, you do it. You do it because you got character. Right. I'll tell you what, you're going to develop character by getting in on the good fight of faith. And character, amen, character's got to be more necessary than ever, amen, in the day and age in which we live. And I just want to say some things about it. Uh, number one, uh, number one, under number one, don't get excited, I'm just getting started. Yeah, uh, having character all, all, well, will help you do some things you don't always want to do. Like, well, I don't know about you, but for me, uh, I ha I'm not a reader. I'm not bookish. Amen. I have to force myself to study. But the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I know I'm supposed to study. I mean, there, i got to break it to you. There's a little more to this thing of being a Bible-believing Christian involved in a good fight of faith than reading your a proverb a day or your favorite song when somebody hurt your feelings. Now, I'm not against doing that. There's just a little bit more uh, to, to studying to show yourself a prayer. Truth of the matter is, if you're not studying to show yourself approved unto God, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Now, I didn't make that up. 
That is true, that's not proven on God, or from that need of God to be a change. Here's where I say, duh, it's right there. Amen. And uh, rightly dividing the word of truth. I'm going to tell you something tonight. Uh, me? Me? I, I don't get up in the morning and think, oh, I can't wait to hit the books. i got to force myself sometimes. Amen. And uh, you're going to have to have character to do that. I can think of a million things I'd rather do. Well, you know, I don't need to study Chronicles or change the oil. I don't know, somebody's got to do it. And I'd rather go out there and I'd rather what? That's a man thing. But the truth of the matter is, in the long run, well, they're both important. You've got a character to do what you're supposed to do. I'm going to tell you what. You're going to have to have a character. You're going to have to develop, nurture character just to pray like you should. Amen. Boy, if there's something that's lacking in our day and age, amen, it's prayer. Correct. It's prayer. Say, how can you tell? Has anybody noticed the state of our nation lately? I mean, do I have to go through verses to show you that we've got some responsibility there? Amen? Amen. amen. Uh, listen, the Bible still says, uh, to fetch your faults one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual for every prayer of a righteous man availed much. Prayer is important. Can't even be praying for yourself. People are some people, oh, pray for me, pray for me. Uh, I mean, are you praying for yourself? Well, let me take it a step further. The Bible says if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Are you, do you, is there any effectual prayers going up for you, by you? Or Because if you got something going on in your life that's hindering the Lord from hearing you, why am I wasting my time praying for you? Yeah. My prayer's going to be this. You need to get right. Get right with God so you can pray for somebody else. Right. Amen. 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 When we can waltz into church with our King James Bible tucked under our arm, we can sing the songs, or we can say praise the Lord at all the right time, and the truth of the matter is, uh, we can play the game for a weekend, and we're not praying like we ought to be. Uh, just let me tell you, man, that's uh, just not the first, most favorite thing that I get involved in on a daily basis. Sometimes I just gotta force myself to take the time to pray. I know it's fundamental, it's foundational. And, uh, amen, the flesh is against all that. So you gotta develop some character. I'll tell you what, getting in on a good fight of faith, rubbing shoulders with other Christians, they'll encourage you uh, to do right. That's where character comes from. Amen? I'll tell you something else. You're going to need character to witness. You're going to need character to witness. Amen? Paying out the track sometimes, sometimes. It, here's what amazes me the most. Uh, you said people stand up, go somewhere, and they'll say, Oh, I, I was at a gas station, and this big old hairy biker, wooly-looking me biker pulls in, and I had one of these virgin tracks, and I was scared to death, and I didn't want to give it to him, but I, I knew the Lord wanted me to, and I sometimes wrote my will and testament real fast on a, on a paper bag, and, you know, and I knew I was probably going to die that very day, but I went there, and I handed him a track, and he said, thanks. <laughs> I hear this, man, a couple times a year. You know, I've worked with the gang 15 years. As far as I can remember, we never assassinated anybody while they're getting gas. <laughs> <laughs> the good thing about that is, is when somebody it goes through all that, you know, uh, it, it actually gives them, they find out, wow, that wasn't so bad. Amen. Sometimes you just got to force yourself. Amen. Hey, man, we ought to use a little sense. Hey Amen. I'm not talking about in the middle of freeway and throwing cars and trash. But I tell you what, you ought to put some in your pocket. You ought to put some in your purse. Yo, hey, how about this? Yo, I wake up and ask God for an opportunity to put a track in the right place where it'll accomplish the right purpose. Invite somebody to church, things like that. Man, we can get up, we can be saved, man, eternally secure, King James Bible, and really never witness like we should. Right. Amen. And the neat thing about that is, the interesting thing, I don't know how neat it is, but, uh, you know, when there's a couple of us together, oh man, we all, oh, let's do that kind of track. But what are you doing when you're alone? Say, how do you know? Because I know how I am. Amen. And I know i got to force myself. Amen. 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 Say, where do you get your messages? Because the Lord beats me up with all this stuff first. That's how. Amen. 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 Then I pass it on because misery loves company. <laughs> 
But when you, man, when you're walking with God, that's the best company there is. That's right. Amen. So let's move move on. I think. I think. Nope. I got another thing under number one. Point number three under point A. Point. Okay. Forget it. Amen. Say, where'd you go to Bible school? Forget about that too. Amen. <laughs> let's, hey, you're gonna be you're gonna be character to do things that are hard to do. Hard to do. Not just things you don't want to do. You know what's hard? Sometimes it's hard to resist temptation. I'm going to tell you what. Uh, Dwight, I was going to say Charles Moody. Dwight Moody, Charles Spurgeon, them guys, the names we know. Their kid didn't have to deal with what our kids have to deal with. I'm going to tell you what. This reminds me. This reminds me of Hitler throwing everything he had against the Allies at the Battle of the Bulge. That the enemy fought harder than ever when they saw the end was near. And I tell you what, if Christians want to live like it or not, the devil knows the time is near. And he's fighting harder than ever. And our kids and our, our families and our men and our women, our preachers, are under an attack of the devil unlike anything ever. And I'm a, it's more important than ever to, to fight the good fight of faith so you can resist temptation. Say, well, I, at least I can't lose my salvation. No, but the Lord would like to use you as a vessel meet for the masses. You get somebody else to Christ, and if uh, you can get your uh, salvation, if you, I'm sorry, if you get your testimony, you'll get somebody else's soul. Take yourself right out of service. We need character. Fight a good fight of faith. They'll do some things for you, and it'll give you character. And uh, it'll give you the right kind of companions, too. It says this in uh, Proverbs 13, verse 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. I'll tell you what, you read through that book, you'll find that true. I'll tell you what, there's so much death and, and, and funerals and, and heartache in that thing. Amen? And, uh, but I'll tell you what, you get saved, you start fighting a good fight of faith, uh, you enlist on this thing, God will give you some wise men and women to walk with. And that'll help you be a little smarter too. Amen. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Listen, I don't, I, I, I don't like this from people use it as an excuse. But the truth of the matter is, there's a lot of folks that are nowhere near the good fight uh, because they got uh, hanging around the wrong folks. And so why don't you just make it up? Listen, that book says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, it says, uh, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and unto good works. Amen. I'll tell you what. You get around other people that are uh, striving uh, to fight the good fight of faith, and uh, you'll provoke them, and they'll provoke you. Right. And that book says, Iron sharpen an iron, and so a man the countenance of his friend. Right. I'll tell you something else. Plastic don't sharpen nothing. That's right. Now, the last thing I want to be around is a bunch of plastic, fake, phony, kumbaya, group hug, Christian. Amen. I, listen, uh, I got involved when I was lost. I want to be involved now. Amen. This thing right here is the realest thing on the planet. We're talking about Bible. Bible. Christianity. Amen. Christianity these days, you got to say with quotation marks around it. I'm talking about Bible Christianity. Amen. 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 Uh, listen, uh, here's what we know now. And we preach young people about peer pressure. And uh, we load them up. We load them up. And here's why. Because we don't want them to be slave to it all their lives like some grown-ups are. Because yeah. peer pressure ain't a teenager problem. Peer pressure ain't a kid thing. Peer pressure is a human being problem. That's right. Amen. And I got, well, I got some bad news and I got some good news. Which do you want first? Don't matter. I'm preaching. Uh, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell, tell you the bad news first. You can't do anything about it. You can't do anything about peer, peer pressure. We're susceptible to it. That's just all there is to it. Right. Now, let me give you the good news. Uh, you do have the ability to choose your peers. Amen. So you can get, you can make a decision to choose people that are going to uh, lift you up or pull you down. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that one out, does it? Amen? You need to a good fight of faith and it'll give you character uh, to do what you might not always want to do or what's hard to do. It'll give you the right kind of companions. Amen? Amen. I'll tell you something else. It'll give you courage. Getting involved in a good fight of faith will give you courage. Amen? We need courage to stand 
in the evil day. Last uh, Saturday, last Saturday, I was standing on a corner down in uh, a Divide, or Woodland Park, Colorado, about, I don't know, 80 miles from here, 90 miles. And uh, there's about 15 of us out there. My wife and I had a corner, and she's holding a sign, and I got a sign. Every time the light would change, man, we'd love to have it for a while. And, and, and that, but uh, and I'm watching that church grow into that. Brother Campbell's got them out there. That street preaching now. It's a real blessing. But boy, some of the folks, they're a little timid, but I ain't getting in the good fight. That'll give you the courage to do that kind of thing. I remember the first time I went on the street back in probably 91, 92. Hadn't been saved very long. I'm with my Bible teacher, Dr. Mike Constantine. But a hot time, I was in a wheelchair. He was shot in Vietnam. He was paralyzed from the waist down. And uh, he, is, uh, he is the best Christian I ever met my entire life. The finest, most spiritual man I ever knew. He went home to him, Lord, now quite a while ago now. But uh, he takes us down to the street. And uh, we were hanging out track for a while. We were hanging, that was going real good until some guy got in his face. He's in a wheelchair. I'm from a motorcycle gang. We know how to stick up for each other. Amen. So this guy started saying something that I had him by the throat up against the wall. I was going back out praying to Christian. Brother Mike's in a chair. Oh, no, 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 don't hit him. I put you down. I said, better get out of here. Come back and get out and kick your rear end. Amen. <laughs> well, I was new at it. I still do it. Probably. <laughs> and then so Brother Mike, he's uh, we're hanging out track, we're hanging out track, and he just, he's real subtle. He said, see that bus? Now, we already gave track to everybody at the bus stop. We're downtown Dayton, Ohio. And he said, now you see down there about two blocks? And he says, watch that bus. Now that bus is coming. Now he says, here's what's going to happen. When that bus stop, people are going to get out. And the people that are sitting on the bench, they're going to start getting. And you got about, you got about ninety seconds right there. And I'm thinking, yeah, okay, for what, you know? <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, we're going to go over and get all the people that got off a track, and everybody that's getting on, they got a track. And uh, so, uh, everything it made sense to me until he took that Bible and folded it open to Hebrew chapter two and grabbed the arm of that wheelchair and leaned forward. Boy, when the people got on the bus, he. Uh, uh, how shall you escape if you neglect so great salvation? And I stood back and went, whoa. <laughs> what in the world is that? What are you doing? I'm numbered about 30 to 1. I've never seen three. I have cussed cops to their face for and, and stuck a barrel of riot bump in my nose. Dare them. That didn't scare me. That scared me. I said, what? In the world, I'm not packing. What's going on? So I learned that the street preaching was. Nobody attacked us. I thought, wow, some people looked, some people ran. You know, it almost done. That's okay. He did that a couple of times and handed up tracks and tried to get used to it. And he said, Brother Dave. <laughs> Oh, Mike, man, he'd sit in that wheelchair with his arm crossed, and he'd look right through you. I don't know how I did He said, it's your turn. <laughs> I said, you're out of your mind. <laughs> Mike Constantine was the kind of guy you couldn't say no to. I don't know how he did it. And he'd just look at you. And finally, you just have to surrender. I said, Mike, what am I going to tell him? I'm not a call to preach. I don't know any... He said, tell him what happened to you. And I just looked at him. And I looked at that bus. And I shook my head. And when that bus pulled up, started to get off. A couple of other guys with us started handing them tracks. I stepped up there. I said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. Amen. Amen. One of the three verses I had memorized. <laughs> I said last year, last year of November, in cell number two on the third floor in the county jail, I bowed my heart to Jesus Christ and asked him to forgive me. That went on for a little while, very little while. Amen. You know what? I scared it down. That was a whole new sensation for me. Don't bother me now. You know what? Because God put me in the good fight around some other people that took this thing about being a soldier for Jesus Christ seriously. Amen. I'm going to give you a verse. It says this in Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. Be strong and have a good courage. Fear not, 
nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee, he will not fail thee. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you something else. I get out of jail about three weeks. I still had the long hair and all that. And my pastor took me to, uh, to uh, uh, North Georgia to a pastor's school. 160 pastors in a place. I'm listening to preaching night and day. It was really something. I met Jack Wood. I met some, I met some men of God there. And then Jack Wood come up to me and says, What's your story, son? <laughs> I said, My preacher, I got saved in jail, brother. Wood. The preacher brought me down here to learn how to be a Christian. He took me to the right place. Met me some people. Me, he introduced me some people that that weren't ashamed of Jesus Christ. So we heard preaching in the morning, preaching in the night, and uh, about the third day, this is the other benefit of being a Baptist. You get to go to restaurants a lot. <laughs> it has some negative effects too. But uh, but uh, we're sitting at a Shoney's one night. And these guys are talking about uh, tracks, and I didn't even know what they were. I didn't know what they're talking about. And then I picked up on it, and they're talking about. And about gospel tracts. And uh, and finally then somebody looks at Brother Spurgeon and he said, Brother Dave, I've been out of jail three weeks, you know. Brother Dave, have you ever handed out a gospel tract? And I went, I don't even know what one was before this conversation started. He said, oh, that's something Christians do. That's something you need to do. And I'm thinking, okay, put that on the list of the other 300 things I've been hearing about. <laughs> that Christians need to do. But, you know, they think, uh, well, why don't you just, tonight would be a good night. Why is everything going to be bright now? <laughs> so here's this waitress. This girl, she's about this tall. She's a little girl. And, uh, you know, and frail looking. And I said, go give one to her. I'm looking at them. And I'm looking at her. And I don't know. I got up. I got up, they gave me one, and I got this track, and I started heading over to this girl, and I look like I'm getting ready to beat her up, and as I get closer to her, she sees, you know, that I'm not comfortable with this, and she is visibly shaken, but she can't tell it, so am I. I had the first track I ever gave out, gave out in my life, and it's Jody, and, and she, is there a problem? I said, read this! <laughs> I mean, she almost fainted. So did I. And uh, I said, when you're done with it, give it to somebody else. And she goes, oh, yeah. And I'm walking back to the table. And I, am, I mean, within my own, I didn't admit none to them guys, but I, man, I was terrified. It won't bother me now, though. I've been in a good fight for 22 years. I got some courage. He said, fight the good fight of faith. Amen? Amen? There's a good fight to get involved in. And it isn't this, man. I know men that be more, more willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with somebody, but won't get on a street corner and hold a little sign that says, Christ died for our sin. But I'm telling you, uh, it doesn't matter if, if it makes you nervous. It is a fight, but it's spiritual. But it's a good one. Some of us were in plenty bad ones. You can get in on the good fight of faith. And if you will, it'll give you the right companions. It'll give you character. It'll give you courage. It'll do some things for you. Yeah. But uh, that's not all. It'll do some things for other Christians, too. Right. If you'll get in on a good fight of faith, it'll do some things for other Christians. Uh, go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. If you put this on the internet, does that mean I can't preach it anywhere else? Burn that tape, man. I'm an evangelist. Amen. <laughs> First uh, Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12, uh, Paul wrote this right here. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. That is a tall order right there. He said, be thou an example be an example of the believer. Let me tell you something. You fight the good fight of faith will make you a good example to other Christians. I'm glad, I'm glad God saw fit to put me in a church with some other folks, men and women too, that were dedicated at the fight the good fight of faith. Boy, he put me in a little church on the backside of Dayton, Ohio, and uh, where, where, where we learned that the King James Bible is the Word of God. I didn't know that. Wait, I didn't even know you got to go to heaven when you died. I just knew I didn't want to go to hell. And I deserved it. And, uh, 
out. And I found out about rightly dividing and saying, how did you find out? My preacher taught it in Sunday school for a year. I tell you what, if you just show up for the teaching hour and the Bible studies of your church in a year, you'll know more Bible than most professing Christians out there that will ever know. Amen. 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 And I learned some things. Amen. And uh, it's because God put me in a place where people were excited about what God had done for them, about what he is doing. Let me tell you, if your pastor says, uh, anybody got a word of testimony for what God's uh, done for you, and all you got is when you were saved 10 years ago, you're missing out. I had a church in Las Vegas one time and say, Brother Spurgeon, stand up and take three minutes. They said that to me. Three minutes. That the preacher can't give his name in three minutes. It said, it said stand up and, and tell the church in three minutes everything God's done for you. <laughs> I tell about that. I couldn't tell you everything God's done for me since I woke up this morning. And three Amen. Minutes. I tell that guy. But truth of the matter is, hey, if you're saved, praise the Lord. But I that book says, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee mighty things, a great mighty things that thou knowest not. And God isn't just a, a saving God, man. Yeah, hey, listen, it says I came not to destroy men's life, but to save them. And God will do stuff. Amen. Amen. God will work with you and work through you and work for you. Amen. Just to make thankful. Give him the glory. Give him the praise he deserves tonight. Amen. 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 And if you'll do that, you'll be a good example of other Christians. Amen? Good. I'll tell you something else. Now, uh, here's a Bible word, edify. Edify. I never heard that word before I started reading the Bible. We didn't go out and drink and beat people up all day and then gather up at the clubhouse and say, hey, what did you do today to edify anybody? <laughs> <laughs> no, what that word meant, but it means to build up spiritually. And it says this in Romans 14 and 19. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify one another. We're supposed to edify. We're supposed to build up. We're to exhort. We're to encourage. We're to edify uh, one another. Amen. amen. And uh, amen. Uh, why fight the good fight of faith? Because if you will, it'll encourage somebody else. It'll edify somebody else. Spiritually. And listen, I got news for you. And you know this as well as I do. Uh, there's enough going on out there, man, between the world of flesh and the devil and sometimes the brethren to tear down and undermine and discourage. I'm going to tell you what's more important than ever. Uh, uh, again, that Bible says iron sharp with iron. It's you be iron for somebody else. Amen? Good. Uh, there's enough going on to try to discourage. Let me tell you something. That's of the devil. Don't you dare be guilty of that. Don't you dare be uh, uh, guilty of undermining somebody else's faith and confidence. Don't you dare uh, uh, misconstrue your liberty as a Christian to be a stumbling block to another Christian. Amen? Thank God for liberty. Thank God for grace. Thank God for God. But listen, there's a responsibility that comes with that kind of freedom. Right. We need to edify one another. Now, a good fight of faith, it'll do some things for you. Amen? It'll do some things for other Christians. And the ones I just mentioned, they're real positive. I'm going to tell you something else it'll do. If your purpose in your heart to get in on the good fight of faith, uh, it, you'll be a good example. Uh, you'll, you'll edify some Christians, but I've got to tell you, I've got to be honest with you, uh, uh, God will use you to expose some areas in their life, some attitudes or even some actions that aren't what they should be. That's what you fight the good fight of faith will do for other Christians. And uh, uh, here's it. In other words, they will put them under conviction. I got news right. Nobody's going to come and thank you for that. Nobody likes being put under conviction. If you'll do your best to live uh, uh, soberly, righteously, godly, and the people around you that aren't, they'll start thinking of you uh, as a Pharisee. Somebody said that to me one time. They said, Brother Spurgeon, are, are you a legalist? I didn't know what they meant. I thought, gee, who'd ever thought anybody would be calling me that? Amen. <laughs> so I just said, I don't know, but are, are you an illegalist, you know? <laughs> That's what happened, Matt. When you purpose to get in on a good fight, somebody else that isn't, yeah. somebody else that isn't, isn't 
And we're supposed to be struggling. The flesh is both. The flesh wants to get the spirit. I think some people don't read the rest of the verse that says the spirit wants to get the flesh. It just looks like the flesh is doing all the winning. But people that aren't trying, aren't trying to get this flesh under control, they're not going to like people that are. But it's still good for them. Good. It still will help them. Amen? And uh, I mean, this, you know this is what I do. It's much easier to go with the flow than to take a stand. That's why so many people go with the flow. A friend of mine, I don't know where it originated, but I heard a friend of mine, Jack Patterson, say, first time, says, either you stand for something or you'll fall for anything. And uh, fighting the good fight of faith will encourage other Christians to do the same. Amen? Courage, uh, courage is contagious. Unfortunately, so is powerless. So you fight the good fight of faith, uh, you'll be a good example to other Christians. It'll do something for you. I just start with you. The flesh always wants to be first. You never think about that. Uh, the three parts of the body. Three parts of the human. What are they? Body, soul, and spirit. How many knew that? How many have just remembered that it says spirit, soul, body? What are you saying, those person? That stinking flesh will rush to the head of the class every chance it gets. Even that, right? You know what we always say? Body, soul, spirit, body, soul. Wait a minute, that's not the order God gave. So I started with, the, with you, but you fight the good fight of faith, it'll do some things for you, but it'll do some things for other Christians. Amen? Amen. And I'll tell you something else. You fight the good fight of faith, we'll do something for a lost and dying world. Now, this world really needs, really needs us to fight the good fight of faith. Uh, they don't know it. Uh, they don't appreciate it. Uh, they don't like it. Amen? And, uh, but boy, they sure need it. That's right. Now, let me give you three things. Uh, they need us to fight the good fight of faith because it'll give them a chance. The world is skeptical. The world is critical. I know I was. I know I was. When Brother Gresham, my pastor, came to the county jail back in 1990, you know, I was there because I, want, I just wanted to get out of my cell. I wasn't looking for God or nothing like that. Uh, I was just, I was in solitary confinement. I was trying to get out of my cell. And they let me go to a church search. And I thought, oh boy, look at this. I almost short haired, tie wearing, cop looking religious guy with a Bible. Old brother, old brother. I was skeptical. I was critical. I was a con artist myself. All the years on the street, I wasn't going to get flint flamed by some religious guy. I was skeptical. Uh, I watched him. I watched him just for lack of something to do. I'm pretty good at analyzing people. That's why I made it almost 38 years on the street. And so I just walked in, and I, here's what I was doing. I wasn't listening to him. I was trying to figure out what his angle was. So why is he here? Why is this guy down here at 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning in November? You know, as he talked, you know, I found out he had a wife and some kids, and, and uh, I thought, what's, what's he doing here? What's he standing again? We ain't going to take up no offering from no preacher in here. We're in jail uniform. We ain't got no money. So I, uh, I figured him out. I was good at figuring people out. I still am. I figured him out in about 10 minutes. You know why that preacher was down at County Jail that morning? Because he really believed that book. Yeah. He really believed that people died and go to hell without Jesus Christ. He really believed that Jesus Christ went to the cross to pay, pay the debt. I didn't believe it. It wasn't an issue of whether or not I believed. When I saw that he believed it, I paid attention. I was willing to listen. Because, see, I didn't want to be calm. Well, I knew he wasn't calm. He, I didn't know that he was right. But at least, here's what I'm trying to say. People are going to have to really see that you believe the message, what you proclaim, what you claim. They're going to have to see that you believe it. Right. Not just on Sunday, not just on Wednesday. They're looking to see if you're really going to walk it like you talk it. Because they're skeptical. But they need a chance. And bless God, somebody gave you a chance. Yeah. We need to fight the good fight of faith for what it will do uh, for them. Amen? Amen. It'll give them a choice. If you and I are giving them a good fight, it'll give them a choice. They need a choice. It's simple. Heaven or hell. 
Amen? Amen. That's how simple it is. Oh, wait a minute. What about Buddha? What about Muhammad? What about reincarnation? What about everybody just going to a better place? What about there's no soul? All those things are being taught and, and, and preached all over the world today, every day. All that. The Bible says that God is not the author of confusion. The right. devil is the author of confusion, my friend. He's done his job well. And I'll tell you what, if you, if people like you and I, would just purpose in our heart, I have to step over the line, get involved in the good fight of faith, and it'll make the choice clear again. There's only up or down. Amen. There's only turn or burn. Fight the good fight of faith. It'll do some things for you. And it'll do some things for other Christians. Amen. Amen. He'll do some things for the lost and dying world. I'll tell you what, Tom Gresham, pastor of Cherry Baptist Church, he was fighting a good fight of faith when I met him 22 years ago. He ain't let up. He ain't backed down. He ain't backed off a bit. He's still fighting a good fight of faith. Amen. He did something for me. Amen? Amen. But I'll tell you something else. Here's where I say last of all, and you just hope I mean it. I don't mean it well. <laughs> Preach. I'm trying, man. Uh, it'll do something for God. Amen. If you'll fight the good fight of faith, it'll do something for God. Amen. Well, he said, fight the good fight of faith. It's not a suggestion. Right. Okay? The Spirit of God allowed that to be put in the Bible. It's a command. Amen. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold uh, on eternal life. Uh, and it says, and, 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 and let me see, First Samuel chapter 15. It tells you that God is more interested in, in obedience than sacrifice. So when we obey, when we do what God says to do, in spite of our reasoning, amen, our understanding, uh, any influence to the contrary, when we'll just do what God says to do, well, that pleases God. That makes God happy. If you'll fight the good fight of faith, that'll make him happy. It says in uh, Hebrews 11 and 6, Without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that digital, diligently seek him. He rewards obedience. It'll, okay. it'll make him happy. I'll tell you what. Uh, you make God happy, he'll make you happy. It works. Amen. I've tried both ways. I made God unhappy, and he made me unhappy. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm not sharp as a knife in the door, but I'm sure glad uh, if, uh, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to uh, forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm glad that's in there. Somebody said, well, dispensationally, that doesn't apply. I said, shut up. Amen. I said, shut your mouth. That's been working for me for 20 years. Right. You tell me it's... Amen. Some people write and reply to themselves right out of their common sense. Amen. <laughs> Let me say this to you. Uh, and we're closer to being done than the last time I said that. It says in uh, Luke 15 and verse 10, Likewise I say to you, there's joy in the presence of the angel of God or one sinner that come to repentance. Amen. If you fight, if you fight the good fight of faith, it'll bring sinners to repentance. I mean, if you'll fight the good fight of faith, amen, uh, people will get saved. Amen. amen. If you fight the good fight of faith, Christians will get right with God. Amen. Sinners come to repent. The Bible says there's joy in the presence of the angel of God. I heard some guy, Sinners, let the angels rejoice, but a sinner comes to repent. I'm going, the angels rejoice. It says in the presence of the angel of God. I don't know. I'm not too smart, but I think that's God in the presence of the angels of God. Yep. I think that's the saints that have gone on before in the presence. Hey, listen. Uh, amen. There's joy up there yeah. when a sinner comes to repent. There might be something you need to come to repentance about tonight. I'm not asking if you're saved. I'm going to do that in a minute. You're in here tonight, and there's something going on. I appreciate you being here tonight. But listen, we don't have... You know what? If everybody was right with God, we would be having a gospel sing. I mean, we wouldn't have that preaching. If all of us were as right with God as we ought to be, this gives us opportunity to examine our heart. Right. This gives us opportunity to hear some preaching, not from a different Bible, not from different doctrine than you get on a regular basis. It just gives you another chance uh, for the witness of the Spirit of the uh, Holy Spirit, uh, the witness of the Holy Spirit to give you another witness. Right. Examine yourself. If there's something that needs something 
some spiritual attention, give it some spiritual attention. Right. And I tell you what, you can put a smile on God's face if you'll do that. If you're in here and you're not saved tonight, and we're glad you're here, I'm going to tell you what, you can go to church every night the rest of your life, and it ain't going to get you into heaven. Mm -hmm. Bible says Christ died for our sins according to Scripture, and was buried and rose again the third day according to Scripture. The Bible said He became sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus Christ became sin so that yours could be forgiven. There's not a better deal than that right anywhere. That's incomprehensible to me still. What is man? that are mindful of them. I don't know, but I'm glad he is. If you're in here tonight, you don't know if you have a shadow of a doubt that if you stepped into eternity tonight, you'd be present with the Lord. Uh, I got news for you. Either you're present with the Lord, or you'll lift up your eyes in hell, and that's not God's desire for you, and it's not this church's desire for you, Amen. and we can open a Bible and show you what it says so that you can know. Right. If you have a question, let it be answered. Amen? Yeah. And that'll make everybody happy. Fight the good fight of faith. Again, I am so glad that verse is in there. Amen. I'm glad I didn't have to become a wimp. As a matter of fact, being a Christian has required me to be more of a man than I yeah. ever was before. Right. Because a real man, a Christian, well, takes the blame when he's wrong. We live in a, we live in a society of victims. I can't believe that Americans are settled with being victims. They've got somebody to blame and they want somebody to come fix all their problems. I'll tell you when my problems started getting straightened out. When I bowed my heart to God and took, took the blame for the mess I'd made in my life. Yeah. He said, that's all I'm waiting for. Yeah. Now let me help you out. Yeah. Maybe somebody in here tonight needs to just take the blame for something that's going on and get God in on helping you out. I don't know what the needs are here tonight. Pastor's going to come, but uh, if you need to pray, well, then do it. If you need to come and pray someone, I don't know how you do it here, but I know this. There's men and women that have been willing to open the Bible and answer your questions and yeah. help you. If you're not saved, they'll show you what the book says. You make your own decision. Well, we trust you make the right decision. Pastor, you come. You do it any way you want. 